Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of The Trading Desk. My name, Joshua Thanos. There's my I'm partner. Jason Main. <laughs> I had a one up on me. Off. What's going on, guys? Welcome uh, Thursday night. You're my accomplice. It's not Fridays. It's Thursdays. I, was gonna, I yeah. wasn't going to call you anything other than my accomplice. Okay. Yeah. Accomplice <laughs> I can get done with. It Thanks is Thanks for uh, signing in. Welcome to the guys in the chat. I haven't pulled up the video yet, so I don't oh, know yeah. who's I'll, in the chat back. I was the first chat one. Box, but... And I marked it with my name. Hi. Did you say first? Yeah. All right. Then it does. It counts. Cool. All right. So, uh, so yeah. Thanks for uh, for joining us again. Another Thursday edition of the Trading Desk, and uh, let's get right into it. Yeah, we're back. Are we doing? Do you, are you wearing a watch right now? I am. All right. So let's do wrist shots. Cameraman, do your job. Jason, am I going do first? Do your job. Yeah. Do your job too. Okay. I was going to pull up the video, but you guys. May or may not know what's on my wrist. This is the Panerai Pam 510 44mm Luminor Marina. It's got an eight day in house movement. Uh, and it's just overall the perfect Panerai. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it's probably my favorite strap that I own. It's probably time to get a new strap. This one's starting to get. Starting to turn a little bit, but um, is that a calfskin? Yeah, it's like it's the just, wax calfskin scrap. Is yeah. that on tang buckle or deployment? It's on the tang. Nice. I don't really care for the be. pen or the deployment buckles, to be honest. They, I like it with they the rubber dig strap. into the back of my wrist. Yeah, and they're not the most comfortable buckles. I have two of them actually. One lost the pin, and I can't use it anymore. And then the other one is the newer one. It's all right. Uh, so watch has loomed for days. Eight day, uh, eight day movement, as I said, runs for about nine, to be honest, pretty accurately, and. Uh, it's kind of my only big watch left, but uh, I enjoy oh, wearing large it. large size, yeah. Yeah. And that's it. Cool. All right. And uh, so here's something new. Let's get a close-up. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So this is one of the newer pieces of my collection. Uh, the watch punches far above its price point. So it's only a $3,700 retail. It's a Bell & Ross Diver. It's the new Diver. The Bell & Ross uh, released, what was it last year, Jay? Uh, yeah, I think it was. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they, they came out year. with a. Uh, so this one is steel BR with a blue dial, blue bezel, and blue strap, rubber blue strap. Um, this is a BRO 392, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it's the. Um, was it 42 millimeters? Yeah. So it's a 42 by 42 square watch. The lugs extend, so I think from lug to lug, it's probably uh, just under 50 uh, millimeters, but it, it fits fantastic. I have a seven inch wrist, um, kind of a flat seven inch wrist. And the watch fits fantastic. I found that myself wearing this as like, as my everyday. Um, comes with a large, here, tang buckle. Let me take this thing off my wrist. It's kind of a Panerai inspired buckle. It is, yeah. So it has like a pre-Vendome Panerai style dive buckle. There you go. Signed with the BR, Bell & Ross. The rubber is is uh, very supple, like yeah, super soft. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice. It's very nice. I mean, I so, think I think that's probably the nicest iteration of like an O3 any oh, yeah. O3 Bell and Ross oh, that exists by far. So the for the longest time, even when I was selling them new, like the, you would buy the O1 because it was the only one that had a screw down crown. Besides right. the O2, the diver they discontinued before this well, diver. The tonneau shaped diver, the right. big ugly one, the big one, it's yeah, terrible. So, but you would buy an O1 because it had a screw down crown. The right. O3s didn't. So now, yeah, it's so that's, it's that's, the most versatile of yeah. Absolutely, that is the best thing about this watch is that it has well the crown guard and the screw down crown, so I can take this. Uh, in the water, which I have and already. an actual bezel, right? And right. and it has a diving bezel. Yeah, it's I a mean, cool watch. for everything you get here, right? Uh, the so the case is brushed on the side, but it does have some beveling and some polished uh, areas that has the four screws on the case, like that everybody knows about the 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 square Bell and Rosses. Um, it just for thirty seven hundred dollars. Like I don't know if you find at a retail position. You know, I don't think you find a better dive yeah, watch. You right? get them cheaper than that pre owned. Well, of course. Yeah. Um, but it's just like you know, it has a little bit of name recognition. It's very comfortable watch. It's everyday wearable. So like literally, I find like when I'm in Miami for the weekends, I wear this all day. Well, yeah, you were telling me that that and the Omega might be the your most worn watches. Right yeah, now. they make on the bracelet. Uh, like during the weekdays, and then on the weekends, I've been wearing this, and then you know whatever, it's mix cool. it up with a Rolex or. Or Panerai or something when I go out at night, but um, I don't know. I I'm really really loving this watch. I think that it's kind of like a it's a sleeper watch. When we did our um, our deskies, we didn't talk about this at all, and I feel like we probably should have. Um, I've probably had this thing for like a month now, so I guess it was, you know, we did that at the end of the year. But um, it's a 
I think it's an unbelievable value, and uh, it's what Eta Movement, I believe, right, Jay? No, uh, it's a it's a Bell and Ross in-house caliber, the BR caliber, uh, I've, 302, pretty, mm, which is I'm pretty sure it's just like a rebranded Salita Movement, but right, whatever. Um, which makes I mean, it it's still I mean, to, listen, it's a three hand, you know. Yeah, three hand. It's with a nice. Date. It's like nice, going. and it has a negative date too that you always love. We can see. Let's date see could be a, a little. You want to get a. Date could be a little easier. To yeah, read, the date is but... small. It's not magnified, so you can see it right at the top there. Oh, right as the second hand. Yeah. Lollipop second hand. I like the little the little color accent too. It's cool. Yeah, the yellow. It, it comes just... in a couple different flavors, right? There's a black. There's actually a bronze, which is super popular. I think it's only two hundred dollars uh, more for the bronze yeah. too. I think it's thirty nine hundred for them. the bronze. I believe. It's Maybe cool. It's I think it's definitely a contender. Uh, you know, if you're sh if you're looking at. You know, like the Oris bronze pieces, or you're trying to decide between that and like the, I, I guess the most popular is going to be the Tudor, mm -hmm. uh, Black Bay bronze. Those have come down in price a lot, so it's definitely a contender. The bronze one's nice. Yeah, the bronze is nice. It's a little heavier than yeah. the steel. Like this just feels fantastic. It's well balanced on the wrist. It's very comfortable, and uh, like there's a lot of just like with Panerai, you can buy a lot of aftermarket straps for Bell and Ross too. There's a lot of companies that make them. So uh, usually the same guys are making watches for Bell and Ross too. So I ordered a. a like a chunky leather strap for it. it hasn't come in yet when it does I'll, I'll post a picture on my instagram but again i'm loving this thing something new to the collection and uh yeah very that was cool. my wrist shot all right jay uh next something that was lacking last week that people oh, yeah. missed we skipped it and this or uh, that it's back yeah man still got that graphic look at that oh sweet Damn. that's cool all right you go first. All right. So theme of this or that picks uh, essentially was just like uh, super sporty off chronos, the beaten right? path kind of chronographs, kind of sport watches you wouldn't normally think of. I mean, these uh, could not be mistaken for dress watches whatsoever. Yeah. Both very, very sporty, unapologetically so. Uh, both sporting some carbon fiber. Yeah. Um, this one, my pick, the this to this week's this or that, is the 45 millimeter uh, ultralight. So it's a full carbon fiber case. Uh, Zenith El Premier movement. It's got a slightly skeletonized, uh, basically relief dial. And I don't know if we could zoom in any farther than that. Or not. Very cool uh, cut, relief cuts on the case. So if even, even further light, lighter, you can see the El Premier beating at 5 hertz. There, 50 hour power reserve. Uh, the watch is, I, I should have weighed it. I don't have a scale uh, at my disposal, but it's unbelievably light. It well, feels days as a drug dealer, what do you think? It feels like you're wearing a Swatch System 51. That's what it feels like. Uh, not in quality, but obviously, but just weight on the wrist. Well, if this is a competition, um, I'd say in quality too. Yeah. It's it's very cool. Uh, I personally don't normally like the El Primeros that have like the open heart or the escapement where you can see it, except for the new Defies. Why? But um, I just, I in general don't like watches where you can like see skeletonized but this is readable which is nice and uh i it does have the tri-color uh sub dials which i like it's only two colors no it's uh like a charcoal a gray and a blue um you also have the date at the Charcoal's six o'clock gray okay i understood yeah uh char uh charcoal for those of you that are colorblind is a scale of gray but different obviously than the gray that's on the dial I guess I must be colorblind. So after I after see I'm done. On that dial, yeah. dude. So as soon as I'm done talking about the date, I'll hand you the watch and you can take a look at it. <laughs> all right, Mike um, across the room. So you got a continuous date wheel that, that goes all the way around the watch. You can see, and then there's a, some red behind where you see the date, the six o'clock. So it just shines through. It's got kind of like a cool technical look to it. It's, it's obviously very sport inspired. And then uh, it's 45 millimeters, but with the weight, it kind of wears uh, a little bit more comfortable than that. What's the retail on that? Uh, this is posted just short of ten. I think the retail is like fourteen four or something like that. Mm -hmm. so, um, okay, so pre on you're gonna find it for ten. Yeah, it's it's mint, mint, mint. It's very nice. Yeah, that one's nice. Deployant buckle too. Yeah, deployant. So that's one really thing nice. that you're gonna have. I'll go ahead and concede that immediately. The deployant on the on the Zenith is a much better system than in the Blanc Pond. So, so my. The watch I picked to go up against. Oh wait, Jason's. I forgot to. What'd you do? You want to see the two different colors of gray on the dial? <laughs> it's just it's gray and blue, dude. Oh, okay. that's, all, that's all that exists on that dial. Oh, but, okay. All right. So here is another. It, well, there. I guess you would say there's three colors in this dial. There's white. Nope. There's black and there's red, Jason. So nope. those are three. That's colors. orange. All right. So let's go ahead and get a close up. 
So what I have here is the Ella Evolution Chronograph Flyback Grand Date Limited Edition. That's literally the name of this watch. It's from Blanc Pond. So the Ella Evolution watches were made uh, as like an offshoot of those Lamborghini watches. So uh, if you watch Tim's video, as I did many times on this watch, you're going to uh, know that, yeah, this watch was designed with uh, the Lamborghini designers as well. So it doesn't share the name, but it has a lot of car-inspired uh, design. So this is absolutely, without a doubt, a sport chronograph. So Blanc Pond is a smaller manufacturer than Zenith. I guess you would hope that they would have better qualities. Probably about the same. I'd say it's probably a half a step above uh, Zenith. Um, in terms of uh, finishing, let's see if I'm going to flip this inside out. There we go. Here, let's go ahead and get a close-up of the movement. There you go. Hmm. So this is a very much like a, uh, a brush steel car engine uh, inspired movement, <laughs> would you say, Jason? That's not what I would say. But what would you, you, say? you would say? Tell me. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't dislike that watch entirely i think the strap's a little ridiculous um why so I, I just, well, it's it, alcantara it little... which is very yeah. expensive and actually holds up really really well so it okay. looks like suede but alcantara if you guys know anything about it is made specifically for like car interiors to hold up to like wear and tear but have the suppleness of of like a um the suede uh, that will fall apart almost immediately under wrist so it's it's alcantara i think it's rubber on the inside the strap is very expensive it's uh it has elements of carbon fiber, so it echoes what's on the bezel. Again, this watch is, so it's titanium, sapphire, and uh, carbon fiber. That's what the watch is made of. It's probably, it probably weighs the same, if not less and, than. Uh, oh, no, it's, it's definitely heavier than this piece. You think so? Uh, but one of the cool things is if you look, both pieces are, like, yep. very sport-inspired and have the lug cutouts. Right. Um, so that carries through. So you see the key exactly. So it's again, it's all sport inspired. It's a uh, it's a little bit of a like a yesteryear Blanc Pond. Like people sure. don't tend to think about these when they, the they think of don't right. do well through retail. Uh, uh, that's why this watch had I have to. I, so this watch, <coughs> for example, we have this list on our website for twelve four twelve four fifty. I believe this watch had like a twenty seven thousand retail, if not higher. Yeah. Right. So it's uh, I think it's a it's a great option, especially at the Sorry. price where you can pick it up pre owned, like new condition. Um, it's a watch you can wear in your Lamborghini, Jay. Yeah. Whereas you're going to be wearing that in your uh, your Mitsubishi. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. All right, so all right, uh, so let's see what the poll says. Josh, loves. do we have a poll today? Is Let me there check that up? Is there a poll? Let's pull it up. Oh, look at that. Oh, I didn't wait. I did me... not see that coming. Oh, I didn't vote either. So hold on, let's go ahead and tip that scale, baby. I think they're just blanc pas. Weird picks. It says I already voted for this poll. That could not be the case. Uh, Anyhow, uh, thank you for the for uh, the guys that voted for me. All right, and so if keep you voting to the end of the show. Then this is a uh, I don't know. I like this watch. Let's put this on the wrist real quick. Somebody is talking uh, shit about Alcantara. Well, you said it's durable and it's really not. supposed to. It's me yeah. it's meant to be more it's, durable. It than... requires a lot of cleaning. Uh, like from me, from the car world, like Alcantara is uh, a little finicky. But I got you. But it's it's absolutely better than um, suede. That's true, but suede well, that's really the shouldn't point. be in a car interior. Okay, fair enough. But Alcantara does hold up better than suede, which I will contend, and uh, I will not uh, change my mind on that. All right. Alcantara, everyone. Okay, I think I just lost this, this or that for the Alcantara. All right. Uh, cool. Yeah. So Keep last voting. week, um, we got a lot of really, really good feedback. We got a bunch of guys that really liked the kind of the analytical data of the top ten, but uh, you know, took a lot of constructive criticism. Josh and I looked at it, and we feel like uh, you know, as we alluded to last week, we think we think it's going to be top five moving forward. To leave some time for some comments and leave some time for this or that and a wrist shot and not have the show be all about the uh, you know top clicks of the week. Yeah. So we do have a top five for you guys today. And uh, the watches have changed a little bit. Oh, yes. And uh, we got some new stuff to talk about. So if we could uh, maybe cue a graphic or two or five and roll into the next the, uh, trending, oh, yeah, watches. trending watches. Look at that. That's fantastic. All right. So uh, it's going to be a top five countdown. Uh, the, so the the fifth most viewed watch this week on our website. So I think we have probably like twenty two hundred watches. Yeah, it's it's a lot. 
All right, so it happens to be a watch that, I guess it's not exactly like the same watch from last week, which was a Turner Graph, but it's a it's a 16014, so it's an uh, an older date just. Again, this one's at 39.50 listed on the website, so if you have to guess, Jason, why would this be the fifth most viewed watch well, from, a, from a consumer standpoint, people who are looking to buy? First, I'd like to say that... Uh, you know this this top five is not as heavy as Ro- as it was last week Rolex wise so right. I'm excited for that uh, so this piece one six zero one four it's a thirty six millimeter it's a wearable size right mm-hmm. uh, Jubilee which a lot of people like especially for uh, like a light light face kind of dressier watch sure I actually think the the watch is pretty uh, competitive at under four grand. And I think I would say that's probably why it's clicked on a lot because it's a relatively modern sized watch that's under four grand stainless steel that you can have now. Um, It's a cool piece. Uh, Would I wear it? It's a little small for me, but tons of guys wear 36 still. So I would say that's why it's clicked on a bunch. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a $3,900 steel Rolex. So, you know, whether or not people are looking for this or this shows up in a, in a search, uh, we don't know. I mean, the watch is still available. We've had that watch for probably a few weeks, so we'll see if that if that means that you know. We did are actually it. have. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, we had some stuff sell from. That's yeah. why it's not in this list. I think it's sold. half the uh, half the watches that were looked at last week at top you know, top views yeah. uh, were sold. I noticed, and then based on that serial number, that's a 1986. So that's actually a birth year watch for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah I won't so you should buy that. No, I. I, I maybe a Daytona or something like that. You're super into like birth years and like lunar cycles and like (laughs) astrology and all that stuff that matters, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. I love that kind of stuff. If only I could be like you, knives and guns and... (laughs) You can try. (laughs) One one can aspire. All right. So Uh, what's the second, the (laughs) number four most viewed watch this week? All right. Happens to be a watch that was on the list last week though. Yep. This is the same exact watch, I believe. It's so the 006 Omega Speedmaster Pro. Was the 06 on last yep. week? Mm-hmm. I thought it was just the re- the reduced. No, nah, it was the 6 as well. It was the 6. Yeah, because I, I do remember this being like, so, I mean, we can go back and check, but I believe this was on there. I think the reason why this watch hasn't sold yet is because it doesn't have box of papers, so some people are hesitant. Even though, like, from us, we're an Omega dealer, authorized dealer, so, you know, we can back it with that yeah. kind of warranty at least, which is a little bit... That's, I think, that's always nice. I but. think you're probably on to something there because the box set for this is just ridiculous. Oh, dude. Yeah, there's, there's this the best massive box, box set. Uh, which is, it's very cool, but it's kind of got like a... With the it, loop and it, everything, right? Yeah, it, but it kind of fades from memory because you're just going to throw it in the back of the closet and it's literally made out of cardboard. Yeah. So it's nice, but <laughs> it's not like this giant metal trunk that you're going to haul around. Well, that's <clears throat> um, the zero that's 06 cool. is probably, I mean, it's the more desirable for me uh, of this current generation. You know, there's a zero 05, which is the Hesalite. I think the zero 06 or the Sapphire Sandwich, as we call them... Um, it's just a more everyday proof type of watch. Uh, for thirty nine fifty, I think it's right on the money. Um, maybe a little bit less if you give us a call, but uh, that's a watch. I mean, you can wear it. The, the great thing with Speedmasters is you can wear them, and then when you go ahead and sell them, you just get out. You know, right. they're, they're fast. Easy. Yeah. Well, so like similar to the uh, to like a Submariner, there's there's endless amounts of buyers for these yeah. watches, so it should be easy it to find someone. So long on as you the moon. Right, the it was on the moon. Not the Sapphire Sandwich, though. No, I know. I'm just... Yeah, Hesalite. All right. So, Moonwatch is... Well, not technically Moonwatch, but the Moonwatch. The All next right. one is a watch that's over the moon. Ah. First watch so far on this, uh, two editions of top 10 or top 5 for Chenning watches that's over the original retail, I believe. There you go. Unless I don't know what that date just was, 1986. But so you have a 3800 Nautilus. So very sought after watch. This watch has always been sought after, though. 3800 Nautilus. Yep. I mean, not to the price point of now. Like right now, you're looking at these watches in the 30s, which is just crazy. I mean, it's a tiny little Nautilus. It's kind of like, at this point, it's almost like a girl's watch. But it's 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 unisex without a doubt. But if you like vintage paddocks, I mean, you cannot go wrong with a 3800. So I mean fantastic piece yeah i mean it's a cool piece it's it's definitely it's up um you know it's at 37.5 it wears more like uh, i would say it wears smaller than that obviously like most yeah. aquanauts um nautilus uh oh nautilus i'm so sorry uh but it, it probably wears like uh i don't know when i put it probably like 35 millimeter case i would it say does, it does wear small um it, it's a little 
it's borderline unisex, I would say. Why uh, do you think this is the third most viewed watch in our inventory right now? Uh, I think a lot of people are looking for a Nautilus. <laughs> they and see a Nautilus it's a for thirty stainless grand. Stainless steel like, blue dial it? Nautilus, and they're like, "These guys are retarded. I'll buy this." <laughs> and then they realize it's a thirty-eight hundred. Yeah. Um, still it collectible. I mean, it's definitely if you're a guy that has a bunch of, you know, Nautili in the collection, a thirty-eight hundred is a cool piece. Yeah. No, I think it's, it, it belongs if you're trying to complete a set of of Nautilus. I mean. The 3800 3, is uh, is a grill piece for a lot of people. So that's probably why. Um, though, I mean, it's a guess at realistically what the what the market is for these things now. So This this one's complete though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it might have an archive. No, nope. full set box papers. Nice. All right. So the uh, the next watch, number two in most viewed watches of the week. We'll make it short order. Of these guys. It's also a small... This would be certainly lady size. It's a Royal Oak, so maybe for the same reason. So this is the uh, 56, uh, 5608 um, ST, so stainless steel. This is, is this quartz? Yeah. So it's a quartz Royal Oak, and uh, I mean, probably for the same reason. People are looking for uh, Royal Oaks. They see one for 7950, which is this one's listed for that price. 31 millimeters, though. In the photo, you can't tell the size, so... We might be catfishing people with these. <coughs> you think that's the case? Uh, yeah, I think, um, I mean, that would make a great gift for a woman. Uh, it's not a bad watch. I would love, though 31's a little small. Like, my, I would love for my wife to wear something like that. But she she would prefer, so she wears a 36 millimeter um, Ballon Blue. Yeah. So 37, I guess, is the next. They do make, they did make 36 millimeter Royal Oaks, I believe. So that would be fantastic for yeah, this. I 31's think... a little small. This is more of like a. I think maybe people are, like I said last week, using the filters on the website, which is, you know, great to search by, and stainless steel AP, yeah. and it pops up, and they click on it. $7,000. Um, $7, you know, it, it's certainly... If you had to guess how long we've had this in inventory, what, what would you say? Uh, 30 days, I would say. Let's see. I'm going to check this out right now, live, on air. Suspense is building. I can feel it. All Where right. Yeah, yeah more than that. Uh, 100, Close or 120 not? 120 days, like huh. four months we've had it. But it's just, you got to find the right buyer. This is something, uh, this is not really a man's watch. So, and most pre owned buyers are men. So they're looking, this would be a gift. So that's probably the reason. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Number one, most viewed watch of the week. This is not what I was this expecting. This is absolutely terrible. It's a Mont Blanc. <laughs> that is a Mont Blanc. It, you know what? From very far away, if you squint, 5235 GJ. I was thinking more like Tag Heuer. <laughs> no, 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 Carrera no. 5. But I'm saying, <laughs> from very far away, if you squint real tight, oh, it looks like a 5235G. From a little closer, you squint a little less, yeah, yeah, it kind of yeah, looks a, like a Tag Heuer. Uh, you know what? From I, Actually, I don't hate Mont Blanc. I like the, um, what's that? That's that a ton, I mean, ton of money, ton of watch for the money. If you well, look at what it is. This one's It's a. Uh, it's basically free. It's a, it's a Heritage Chronometry Dual Time. I don't think I've ever sold one of these watches. Have you? Uh, I mean, I've definitely sold Mont Blanc. I don't know if I've this seen model. this this Heritage Dual Time in person. It's actually not. It's not bad. So it's, it's it has case back. Some you know. seconds on the bottom. It's a power reserve. <clears throat> uh, no, what is that? Is that a power reserve? Yeah, it uh, looks like power reserve indicator and sub seconds. Looks like exhibition case pack, deployment buckle, forty three millimeter case size. Uh, oh, it's a Dual Time. That's that's a day night. Oh, uh, Dana. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Uh, and it does have box and papers. So, uh, why is this watch the most viewed watch of the week? And does that mean anything in terms of the market? I would say I don't know, and no are the answers. Uh, Other than you know, lower the lower the price point, the larger the buying pool. Yeah, right? I would say uh, so. It's it was recently marked down, which okay. is generally uh, you get a little bit of traction for clicking there. Sure. Because it was priced at twenty nine fifty, now it's priced at twenty four fifty. Uh huh. Um, so I think, you know, maybe if people are looking at it already and they see it goes down, uh, that could be some clicking or people are specifically searching the sales, you know, sales section. Sure. Um, and they clicked on it. It's, I mean, it's, it's not an ugly watch and for 2,500 bucks to get something, if you're going to go buy, uh, you it's know, a like nice a long jeans or something like that, yeah. it's a step uh, up from you know, it, it's certainly a step up from that. So not a bad watch for the money, I would say. Hold on one second here. Nice. All right. So that is, so the most popular watch this week on our website 
has been a Mont Blanc for twenty five hundred dollars. Well, some would say it's the top of the mountain. Mont Blanc. Is that, is that a Mont that's, Blanc joke? Yeah, that's a Mont Blanc. That's a joke. great joke, Jason. Thank you. So I'm glad man. that you picked that up. You are a very witty. Really, fellow. just one of the funniest people. So, all right. So, uh, do we? What do we say? Do, is this an overview of the market? You think? Uh, no, I think this. I think I was. Well, what surprised can we from, about... from this data? Right. So, Rolex. People want steel Rolex. Mm-hmm. People want Speedmasters. I th- I have a feeling that every week a Speedmaster is going to be in this in the top five. People want Speedmasters. We sell them like faster than we can get them. Sure. Right. Paddock Nautilus on fire. <laughs> Royal Oak also on fire. Mont Blanc on fire. <laughs> yeah, Mont Blanc's a flyer. That's for sure. It's kind Blanc, of a little uh, bit more of a fluke. I have a smartwatch. Yeah. Well. Not a smart decision, but a smart watch. Hey, listen, I didn't pay much for it, but it's nice. It's, it's very useful. Um, I haven't worn it in a while. It's too big. Yeah, I think uh, the Mont Blanc is a little bit of a flyer. The other pieces, uh, obviously the AP and the Paddock are smaller variations of what's popular now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that's uh, you know part of it. The Speedmasters, the only watch from that uh, five pieces that I would actually wear. Right. Uh you know, price aside, I mean, I'm not wearing a 3800. is too tiny. Mm-hmm. The Mont Blanc is not for me. The Rolex is too small. The Speedmaster, I would, I've, yeah, would t- totally wear a zero zero six. So you have you have an interesting insight on Speedmasters. They, yeah, they're just like you can't, uh, ra- you can't wait to get rid of them once you get them. Well, like the yeah, there's it's the curse of the Speedmaster. Um, they they got this weird uh, kind of stigma around them. They're just they're so generic and so it's kind of like uh, the same thing for. Their, uh, uh glass shoot for me like they're they're so cold and sterile that it's like they're really really awesome the movement's perfect you know it's really the movement's pretty to look at sure the rest of the watch is like very uh uniformed and, and sterile mm-hmm. so you get it's it German. great you put it on you wear it for a little while and then you go yeah, and i'm done with this and i'm gonna sell it yeah um i've i've i wouldn't even say i've owned them i've had in my possession for s- several weeks at a time four speedmasters right like, they weren't even I, – I wouldn't even say that you owned it at that point, right? Mm-hmm. It's like a test drove it. As soon as you um, yeah, as soon as you buy it, you're thinking about and it's, selling it's it. And autom- it, they just don't stick. And then uh, – Well, it's th- easy to sell. Maybe that's part of it. Uh, there's that. You know, there's people that are like, oh, that's cool. I'll take it. And it is it is easy to sell, which I'll give you. But it's just not easy to keep. Maybe that's opinion. the reason. That's fine. But all right. So, so this actually – I would say this is a snapshot of the market. Maybe these watches specifically – Aren't the hottest, but yeah. in terms of search results, and we'll, we'll be learning more as we as we move on. We'll have better insights on this stuff. But you know, steel Rolex, Speedmaster, Nautilus, Royal Oak, <laughs> Mont Blanc, Dual Tap, baby. But it is, you know, what's it's actually if so for somebody like me who doesn't really want a dress watch because I'll never wear it, so I don't want to spend any real money on a dress watch. But I want to wear something that's like that's not total junk. Yeah. Okay. To buy this watch as a, a pre-owned for twenty five hundred bucks, I get a dual time complication. But again, it looks like a three hander. It's not you know garish. It'll certainly fit under a cuff, and I'll wear this I don't know twice a year, and I won't be I won't feel bad about it being in my uh, my watch box. I don't mind that watch. I think it's kind of handsome. It looks a lot like a JLC, but you're not going to find that watch from JLC for twenty five hundred bucks. Interesting. So, um, uh, the knight in the panther skin is a very odd name, sir. In the comments, says that the man who owns Rolex is calling Speedy sterile. Find me. I I could name twenty Speedmaster references off the top of my head that are more it. handsome than a zero zero six. Get him, Jay. <laughs> I just I so first I I agree with you that the Speedmaster is sterile, but it's sterile in design and the simplicity of the watch has been crafted over the years, sim- similar to the Speedmaster. My problem with the Speedmaster is it has not changed, ever. So we have a 006, great. Modern, they put a case back on the back of the watch. It's still ideally the same exact watch, same movement, same everything. So when I argue that uh, you know Rolex is what it is, but the reason that it is what it is is because they hold more patents than any other watch space in the world, really? watch company, and, and the watch is just constantly evolving. Mm. Right, all the patents, all the stuff that changes here and there. So the watch might look similar, but it's not the same watch. So, and then to speak on top of that, we're talking. Look at the market right now on Rolex. So it's very, very easy to fall in love and and want something when you know that it's retaining value. 
which is not the case with the Speedmaster. Even though that they're they're relatively neutral, they don't, you know, they're just they're so oversupplied. They're like surplus. Right. So I agree with you to a point, but I don't think it's a valid enough comment to call somebody. I think they're for, both equally for what sterile. They own. I mean, no, it's fine, but it's a sport. It's it's a utility watch. It's a tool watch. The Rolex heart, is right? a better watch in every single way, uh, besides the fact that it's not manual. And and on top of that, one of the uh, things you, that you'd I rather hate, be manual. You're saying no. I'm saying that the Rolex is superior in, in every. It is superior in Without every way. Not taking into account. You're right. Not taking into account the fact that it's automatic versus manual. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of my major gripes with the Speedmaster, and uh, a lot of people don't want to admit it, but it's a manual wound watch with the stupidest crown design. It's it's a hard watch to wind. I guess. And the crown guards aren't doing you any favor. The big pushers. Um, while I think the watch is, and again, I've had a bunch of them, while I think the watch is handsome, I don't think it's uh, as efficient as people you know, want to make it as a tool watch because sure. it's a hard watch to wind and you have to wind it. Yeah, so. I guess if they if they were to figure out uh, a better system, either extending the crown a little bit, I'd rather not make it larger, but yeah, that would probably, <laughs> that might make me want to keep one in my collection because I've had, I've, I've done... Not four times, but probably twice. Yeah, I've had one on for probably like three or four days, and said, "Ah, either I'm not going to buy this, or let me go go ahead and sell this." But I do like the way it it sits on the wrist. I I like it almost better than than a uh, ceramic sub. The uh, the I fit mean, is nicer than you you being a an owner of a ceramic sub. But I don't I don't I wouldn't say this fit is nicer. I think that the uh, I don't know the sub has the best buckle in the entire industry. I don't disagree. Uh, it's thin. It sits well. Like it, it's also a completely different watch. It's it's bulletproof. It's water resistant, which is not what you can, you can't say the same for the Speedy. Um, but the Submariner's never been on the moon, so I guess there's that as well. Each has their uh, their pros and cons, I guess. But hmm. yeah, the the Knight and the Panther skin uh, disagrees with you big time. He goes, my name is <laughs> is after a great poem. Well, okay, that's, that's fantastic, man. Yeah. Poetry, I support man. you. Yeah. I support you in your in your fight against Jason. <laughs> it is not a fight, I assure you. All right. Um, so if you guys have any questions about watches, want to buy, sell, or trade watches, you see our information here on the on the screen as well. Feel free to reach out. People do. That's fine. Usually we'll yeah we'll answer. Um, so real quick, what watches are you seeing? Are, are you seeing any slowdown? In what's happening with the uh, with Rolex Paddock AP, uh, I think you have a little bit of slowdown. I don't know that it's necessarily related to the to specific models or brands. I think it's related to the industry, and I think it's uh, people pumping the brakes a little bit for Basel. So you do see a slowdown. I, I see a little bit of a slowdown. I see a little bit of people uh, hesitation of people throwing money out. There's a little bit of a speculation. People are waiting. So this is what happens right before Basel. You know, we're, what, three I weeks guess. out? Yeah. Just short of that? Uh -huh. um, so n not a lot of people looking to make a lot of moves right now. It's kind of like, let's wait and see what happens. All right. Which, uh, you know, I can understand. You don't want to go drop, uh, you know, coin on pay over retail for something, and maybe it gets discontinued and it's no longer cool. Uh, or the opposite of that. I don't yeah, know. I, I mean, it depends. Some people don't look at it like that. Some people only want it if it's still made. I've, I've talked to many people that are like, oh, it's discontinued. I don't want that anymore. So, or let's say you're waiting for something and it gets replaced with a newer model. Like maybe you want same yeah, thing yeah, when you're yeah, looking yeah. to buy a car. Or well, whatnot, a lot of times you know? people trade. So this time so, of the year, usually people trade out of what they have in, in anticipation of picking up the next thing or putting, you know, whatever it right. may be. Uh, though, like <laughs> anything that's released at Basel now, in the past, five years ago, there's probably an opportunity to get that watch in a reasonable amount of time. Under no circumstance, How? unless it's a Cellini, and even that last year yeah. was it two years ago when the new Cellini Moonface came out. There was a waiting list for that watch, not anymore. Yeah, but, but there not, was. not it that was holds a... better value than any Cellini ever made. Oh yeah, but so uh, I've had good guys trade in and out of that watch without getting hurt. How how much are you looking forward to the phone calls the day after Basel? Yeah, we get those. Hi guys, we'd like I'd like to put my name on the list. I would like four of those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, sir, we, we we don't even know you. Like, uh, but sure, we'll put it's you on the list. We'll call you in ten years, I'm, I guess. I don't, I don't even know. know if I'm gonna get the watch. Right and at this we, point, we won't. And it's so. I hope it does calm down. I, so my experience has actually been a little bit different than yours. I think this month. So this has been, from a sales perspective, it's probably been my my best February, um, uh, in the last six years. 
So, which I was surprised. I wasn't expecting it to be yeah, like I mean, this. Listen, uh, selling lots of Rolex, AP, or sorry, uh, uh, some AP paddock for sure. So fifty nine eighty rows. That watch uh, has gone up in value just in the last three weeks. The price was at a hundred thousand dollars last uh, three yeah. weeks ago. They're listed for one hundred thirty thousand now. So I, I have actually seen a, a, a lot of demand, and I'm I'm quite surprised by it. And I. Obviously, for you know, from a selfish perspective, I'm happy about that. And also, you know, I think that one thing about our industry, it's we could be very, very, pro, uh, you know, honest about this. These are frivolous purchases, right? Nobody needs to buy any of these things. But when the watch market is up, that's usually an indication that people have extra cash, which means possibly the the, uh, the economy is doing well. So it's it's a decent lagging indicator of the of the uh, of the economy. So that makes me feel good. And uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm very excited to see. Oh, the knight. Oh, by the way, let me stop for one second. The knight in the panther skin says he's been watching us since the watching one day. So, sir, I salute you. You and I are friends. I know you have a problem with Jason, but that's fine. Most people do. Um, so back to what I was. <laughs> so uh, back to what I was saying. I is apologize that, for Josh. That I'm I'm surprised by the uh, by the demand. In, in the pre-owned think, watch space right yeah. now and new, but also I'm very excited to see what happens in Basel because I think it's only going to set things on fire. I think um, in terms of like sales and all that, it's been great. You know, both both of us did uh, did what we had to do, and it was and it's been good. I think the hesitation is in certain core brands. So I guess uh, yeah. that being said, I, I am I am excited for Basel. I'm not, I'm like uh, oddly excited for Tudor. Like Tudor sub, yeah. I, I feel like it's almost so Rolex. 100% everybody's guaranteed. waiting on Rolex, right? We got, we've all heard, you know, the rumors online what's okay. coming. Um, but I, I'm, I'm sitting by waiting for uh, a new LHD. I'm waiting for a Tudor sub. I'm waiting for, uh, you know, a couple different iterations. So cool. I would like to see them uh, maybe put out a tool watch. Well, that's not Tudor a, and Rolex are going to blow up. Uh, AP was at SIHH sort of, and uh, well, Paddock will be for Basel. Yeah. Um, what else? Well, Swatch is no longer at either. So I guess it's just going to be Tudor and Rolex. Yeah. We'll, well see how I mean, it goes. To be fair, that's, that's what, what it the last is. couple of bottles of the Yeah, but anyways. Uh, interesting. So anyways. All right, guys. Well, listen, this has been fun. Somebody just asked me how OJ Watley's doing, and it's funny because he literally three minutes ago, he just called me. So I'll find out. I'll find out how he's doing. I probably won't report back. Um, but guys, thanks for logging on again. Uh, give us some feedback. Tell us if you liked or hated today's segment. Uh, we'll try to make it better. If you guys hated it and if you liked it, well, we'll just continue to do the same thing, right? All right. Uh, remember, subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. We have 69,000 subscribers. So let's just stop right there. 69. Mm. <laughs> All right. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your friends' family, family and friends, your neighbors you don't like. Tell them to subscribe to our channel. Uh, check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook, check us out on you Uber. Are we Should on we, Uber? You can Uber watches to you. Uber eats. The, you want to pull Uber up the poll watch real quick? One, oh, the poll. Yeah, uh, on a fadeaway. Can we get the poll? I was gonna. I was going through my. I know you were. I was. I was <laughs> trying to save everybody. Oh baby! Look at that. <laughs> and up. fade to black. <laughs> no. All right, guys. So check uh, check us out. On uh, MySpace and uh, Grubhub and Grinder, Jason's on Grinder. Uh, 